Hi everybody and welcome to part 3 of my tutorial on how to migrate map files from UDK into Unreal Engine 4. If you've been following along so far, excellent, you'll have everything set up as necessary. If you haven't, uh, you, I would suggest watching part 2 because this covers setting up your project in Unreal Engine 4 uh, so that this process works. Okay, with that said, first thing we need to do is open the map file that you want to migrate. We're going to go ahead and save it under a different name. Uh, I normally call mine transfer file, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm calling it tutorial. The reason I'm doing this is because as we mig migrate things over, we're going to be deleting them from this file so that we don't lose track of what we have and haven't brought along. It's just a lot easier in the long run. Okay. Now, a couple of things we need to do with the map itself. We're going to go ahead and in view we're going to untick lock prefabs from selection. Prefabs. Prefabs, that's an interesting one. And we're also going to go ahead there's probably an easy way of doing this but I'm not sure what it might be if there is. Okay, we're going to go into our scene and select everything. And what we're going to do is we're going to ungroup everything. If you don't have any groups in your map, don't worry about it, but I do. So we're going to go select everything, takes a little while. There we go. Uh, right click, and of course, uh, bah, 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 bah. I always lose track of it in this. I should know where this is. I should know. Groups. I found it immediately. <laughs> Easy. And uh, we're going to click uh, ungroup, not unlock but ungroup. Okay, give it a chance to either crash or <laughs> actually ungroup everything. I should be telling jokes at this point I feel. Uh, what's green and fluffy? Green fluff! Ah! Ha ha! Ah! Ah, ah, ah. Okay, uh, yes, deselect everything. And uh, now the map's ready to go. Okay, we're going to save that. Okay. Now we're in a position where we can start migrating things over. So the first thing we're going to migrate is interpactors and our lights. I'm not sure which lights are compatible with this tool. Um, but I'm just using point lights and I know they work so it might be a case of inter uh of just playing around with the tool to get it to work with your lighting. Okay, so we have all our inter selected. Control C and go to our tool here, our offline T3D tool. Yeah, if, if you haven't downloaded this already the link will be in the description below. Okay, just a little bit of setting up. We need to make sure that under UE4 Content Directory, it links to the content folder within your project. Uh, it's very simple, just hit the browse button, head to it. Okay, Control V to paste in all our code, and we're going to click Convert. Now that's all there is to it. Select all and copy it. Make sure you copy it. If you copy uh, my keyboard can be a bit dodgy and not copy it. If you paste code directly from UDK into UE4 it will crash. Um, so just keep an eye on that. And then all you have to do is in your scene simply hold control hit V to paste everything in. Uh, as you can see here I've already uh, got a few in from a failed recording earlier. Okay next thing we want, we want to bring in is our Point lights. I'm not sure if every light is compatible, but I certainly know point lights are. And we're going to go ahead and select all them. Again, Control C. Give it time to copy them. There we go. And simply paste them. Convert. There we go. That's all our lights converted. You will need to adjust. Uh, light intensity, other things. You will need to set all these back up um, to 
comply with Unreal Engine for four's uh, standards and different units of measurement and updated figures and everything else. Okay. Now the next thing I want to discuss is static meshes. For the case of for the purpose of the, this tutorial, I'm only going to do this in the way that I know works. The idea with this tool is that you can take static meshes and paste them in and convert them, much in the same way which we've it's the same way we've done with the interpactors and the point lights. But for me, the application doesn't want to know. It does not allow it. It just it it crashes. So for the purpose of this tutorial, if you can copy and paste your static meshes into here and convert them and paste them into a real engine 4, fantastic. If like me your application crashes, this is how we can get around it. Close the tool down and we're going to use the web version which only deals with static meshes. Uh, this could be found on Matt3D by blah blah blah, the link will be in the description. And what we want to do, of course, is take our static meshes and bring them over. Now, because we're doing it a specific way, we can't just select all of our static meshes and put them into the tool because it loses uh, mesh data in the process. Okay, so this is what we're going to want to do. We want to select each instance of the mesh of a specific mesh and bring that over. Let me show you what I mean. Um, emitter's getting in the way, that's really annoying. Oh, that one wasn't. <laughs> right, so take this pillar here. We're going to select it, hold shift, hit Z. What this basically does is it selects every single instance of it within the level. We're going to right click, finding content browser, and we can see here that it's called SM Pillar Block 02. Again, make sure that with all of them selected, you're hitting Control C to copy them. And we're going to go over to the website. And we're going to paste in that code here and submit. It takes a couple of seconds. With this new code, select it all, copy it, and bring it into Unreal Engine 4. Now, as you see, it's lost all of the information for the mesh. So, to remind ourselves what the mesh was called, SM Pillar Block 02. And simply go in here and click SM. So, I have a cat in the way. <laughs> She's not helping. Pillar. And then we're just going to find out, find the mesh, SM Pillar Block 2. And there we go. That's the uh, mesh brought in. You're going to have to do that for each and every one of your files, uh, for each and every one of your meshes. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, once it's migrated over, you're going to want to go ahead and delete it. And that, of course, then reduces visually uh, any confusion as to what you've got to bring over, what's left to bring over. And that's basically the theory behind it. Um, it's a very long process. Uh, but unfortunately it's the best we have at the moment um, and yeah I hope that was helpful to somebody thanks very much for watching